My name is Ksenia, and if you're here, you're probably interested in sustainability, zero waste, minimalism, and mental health. Today we're going digital, but maybe not in a way you're thinking. We're going to talk about digital minimalism and the impact that our emails, um, AI and cryptocurrencies have on the environment. And of course, I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how to reduce your digital waste. Let's start with a simple thing that not many of us even think about, and it's the email, particularly all these marketing and spam emails. Did you know that to send, store, and process all of the emails, a lot of energy is required? One of the tips that you can easily implement is trying to reduce the amount of emails uh, that you send at work. Remember this uh, meeting that could have been an email? Now think of the email that could have been just silence or not replying anything. Another way to reduce the storage on your device, but also uh, the storage that is required to S store the emails in the cloud is to regularly clean your deleted and spam folders and unsubscribe from all the emails that you are not uh, interested in and uh, when you are using a new service or shop also read carefully and untick the button which automatically subscribes you to marketing emails this not only helps you uh, save the environment, but overall makes, uh, makes it easier and streamlines your communications and your inbox. Because I know some people who have multiple email accounts, and some of them are just for spam, so I think that's kind of wasteful and absolutely not necessary. Personally, for me, the <laughs> just seeing the icon of how many emails some people have, like some how many unread emails, just giving me anxiety, and that's why I disable all the notifications on my social media and I delete all the messages that that I receive or the emails that I receive straight away. Another thing that you may not consider straight away is the energy that is required to stream your videos. I'm not telling you that you need to watch everything in 360 piece but 120 pixels and I think the resolution is usually really uh, you know good enough for definitely for a YouTube video and if you want a better viewing experience for a film then uh, maybe you can upgrade to uh, a thousand piece. It's been years for me since I swapped to Ecosium mostly because I wanted to participate in their planting initiatives but also Ecosia is a search engine that is carbon neutral or even carbon negative because of the impact that they do so consider swapping uh, to Ecosia on your devices because even though Google is aiming to be carbon neutral uh, you still can. I have to admit that Ecosia took me some time to train the algorithm to actually provide better uh, search and result experience, but the more you use it, the more accurate results you get when you search with it. And last but not least of the least things that you can suspect are actually taking up your energy is the cloud storage. I have Apple devices and Apple users are famously known for running out of storage all the time and uh, needing to buy extra cloud space. Well, I have, I managed to avoid it uh, even though I don't have a lot of um, inbuilt storage on my devices. I think it's 128 GBs, but I've been getting away by just using my own storage by optimizing the amount of files that I have regularly cleaning them, it also makes uh, it easier to find things and I also regularly clean my photos and videos because I do film and 
take pictures a lot and it's uh, actually better I think because I actually get to go back to all the photos that I've taken for example during the holidays and select only the ones that I want to keep. One of the rules that I had to learn as well as a photographer is that sometimes you take multiple shots of something just trying to find a better angle or lighting and so on but then you always need to go back and clean it up just uh, so that in post-production you don't have to go through multiple shots of one thing it just makes your life easier <laughs> now next topic is cryptocurrency and i've actually seen it being raised by some other sustainable creators uh, so you might be familiar with the way that cryptocurrencies use up a huge amount of energy. But to give a little bit of a background, what, crypto, what are cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies are actually a digital, 100% virtual currency that uses uh, cryptography uh, as a secure way of uh, communicating. It takes encryption on multiple levels to transfer information so that it's much safer than the direct transfer of information. Per se, and on its own, cryptocurrency and blockchain are not bad because they enforce and they allow individuals to transfer money from uh, one person to another without paying a bank for a percentage for transfers. We all want fast, secure and independent uh, transfers. However, of course, because of the extra security, anonymity and difficulty to decrypt the uh, chain of transfers, cryptocurrencies are often used by uh, criminals as well. There are debates whether cryptocurrencies actually require government regulation because the whole point was that uh, government or the banks are not involved but in my opinion it has to be regulated at least for the sake of environment where there are cryptocurrencies that uh, use sustainable and renewable energy while others like bitcoin use unverified sources of energy. You probably heard some of the popular names of, bit, uh, of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin and Ethereum and many more. I have to be fully transparent that I also do invest in uh, cryptocurrencies because although they are volatile they are an a much cheaper way to store your investment rather than in the banks. Now, where exactly does sustainability uh, come into cryptocurrency? Well, to mine cryptocurrency, you don't do it literally, but you do it by using your laptop or a server to provide energy for the transfer of the uh, coin. And this is why there are multiple farms uh, that just have a ton of um, computers and laptops connected to, to the grid to provide the power to trade and transfer the coins. So what would be the solutions for this? Well, for example, Ethereum is transitioning to proof-of-stake mining, which requires less energy uh, and therefore is more sustainable. Uh, additionally, when you invest into cryptocurrencies, you have to understand that uh, you can still vote with your wallet even if it's investing into something digital like this. Uh, I only invest in the initiatives that I believe are sustainable or going to benefit the humanity. Uh, for example, I have assets in uh, coins that are for clinical research and even for sustainability as well. 
Proof of stake is different than proof of work. Proof of uh, stake means that a person who is mining the coin at the same rate of how many coins they have. Unlike proof of work, where the person mines the coins based on their uh, potential to and access to electricity. A lot of coins can only be sold or operate only through Bitcoin or Ethereum and that's why I think it's uh, better to use the ones that are associated with Ethereum. And other sustainable cryptocurrencies are Cardano and Tesos, which both partner with sustainable organizations and invest in sustainable initiatives. I'm obviously not a financial advisor uh, or a cryptocurrency expert in any way, so please take this with a pinch of salt. And if you decide to invest, please do your own research because investment, especially in cryptocurrency, always involves risks. Another fad uh, that has been, not really a fad, but a development of technology that has been uh, available to the public recently is, of course, artificial intelligence or AI. And I've also seen uh, some creators raising the question of how, what are the, what is the price that our planet is paying for AI? And it's quite huge because uh, obviously uh, the computing power of the artificial intelligence requires energy, and this energy doesn't always comes from come from reusable sources, but mostly from uh, coal and uh, oil and gas. Again, I believe that just as with cryptocurrencies, AI has a potential for actually turning the tides around and making it more beneficial for the, for the planet. I'm not going to deep into the ethics of AI because I think it's a whole other uh, topic um, altogether. But of course, I will say that uh, with the rise of gen uh, generative AI, so the one that can create pictures and so on, um, <clears throat> we are actually straightening away from <laughs> valuing, uh, valuing human intelligence and valuing human uh, creativity and that's why I know that a lot of artists are actually against AI. I, as I work in IT, use AI quite a lot uh, because AI is capable of uh, com computations uh, which are much faster than a human and but at the same time it's just a tool uh, uh, for me, it's just uh, the same tool as a search engine or an email. So I'm not putting AI in, in, onto the pedestal. At the moment, I believe that human verification of AI will be required for a very long time. And of course, uh, they, there are such concerns with AI as uh, personal data because the information that you share with AI is an open access information so potentially your ideas or some if, uh, any information that you submit to ChatGPT uh, or other uh, AI bots uh, will be used by AI. So <laughs> uh, consider very well what you are uh, putting in and what is, you have to understand for yourself what is the trade-off that you are uh, comfortable of accepting how much of your data you're willing to give up for the benefits of AI. Just like with the cryptocurrencies one of the solutions could be switching to more sustainable uh, sources of energy for AI but also uh, customizing the way that people use it, maybe have more narrow models that uh, have, require less power. Uh, for example, you know, only uh, industry-oriented uh, AI modeling. I, I think that AI-generated content is soulless, 
I think the gist of this video is that technology could be both the downfall of our society but also the saving grace of it. And I would like to end on a more positive note and share some of the websites, uh, apps and resources that you can use uh, to be more sustainable. One of the best websites and sources I've been using is Good On You. This is a website and uh, also an app that uh, shares a lot of sustainable and slow fashion tips but most importantly they have a brand inventory which shows which brands are most sustainable and they judge them by several objective criteria so all these criteria are always applied to the brands to see how they stack up and then if you for example see that your brand is not sustainable and you want to avoid it there are always suggested alternatives as well another one which i'm not sure if it's if it's available in the us but another application that i've also used is too good to go it's an application that searches for leftovers and expiring products in your area, at the supermarket or at the business where you can get products for half the price or even for free. A friend of mine and my mother-in-law are <laughs> very good at this. They look for the opportunities to pick up a box from a supermarket with some of the uh, expired produce which is still good to go <laughs> of course i've already mentioned ecosia which could uh, be installed on your laptop and your smartphone and uh, and i've mentioned many times depop and vinted on my channel so they are obviously an app that you consider consider sustainable and then last but not least since we talked about cryptocurrencies today i also want you to consider the bank that you are using and how sustainable it is the banks are known to invest in arms trade and coal mining industries so uh, look it up there are several sustainable uh, banks uh, out there all over the world some of them are fully digital which makes working with it also very easy and accessible if you're into this kind of thing i have both of my investment pension and bank bank checking account and credit card from ISN bank and we also have house insurance and mortgage with a sustainable bank as well so that was the point for us and the point is that for the next 20 years i am investing in things like uh, sustainable agriculture and sustainable energy rather than uh, other things <laughs> Well, to sum up, this video uh, is a little patchy and all over the place, but what I wanted to communicate is that a lot of things in your life could be streamlined and made more accessible for you and better for the environment, and these changes are also beneficial for your mental health. For example, just like I said, I'm being overwhelmed by the <laughs> a huge amount of unread emails, but if it's okay with you, that's fine too. However, I think that if you are looking for uh, active uh, ways, but also simple steps that you can take to be more sustainable, digital minimalism is something that you can try. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about it and if I, uh, you would like me to make more videos like this. And as all YouTubers and vloggers are supposed to say, please like this video and subscribe. Bye!